name is Reverend the Clown, and today I'm going to be teaching on praise and worship and the power of praise and worship. I'm going to be using, I'm actually going to be using a, a coloring book that I wrote, but it has the same information for kids and adults. Right there, ribbons, believe it or not. And so I'm going to be not reading from it, but using it as my example. Um, and you want to download these coloring books free. They're not up there yet, but they will be on my website in a couple of weeks. And this is August 2009. Um, Psalms 63, 1 and 4 is a great model for how to pray and praise. Um, it's those, the verse, I mean, it's the scripture that God told me to pray every time I minister. This is how it goes. Oh God, you are my God. I will look to you first. Does that sound familiar? Seek first the kingdom of God. Okay. I want to feel your presence. My spirit wants to know you. This is the... This is a child's way of saying it. Let me, let me just go ahead and read it out of my, my Bible. Psalm 63. Uh, 63. I love this. I pray this when I pray. And it just always brings me into God's presence. Oh God, you are my God. That means you're not your God. God is your God. Early will I seek you. You seek God first before anything else. My soul flesh for, thirsts for you. My flesh. So my flesh longs for you. So your flesh wants to get into God's manifest presence. I'm not talking about getting God's presence by faith. I'm talking about actually experiencing and feeling with your flesh body God's presence. And it says right here that that's okay. It says, my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. A dry and thirsty land is where I'm called to the churches that don't have no spirit. They just have a form of religion. And that might be where you go. Okay, a dry and a thirsty land is a church or a, a church or a place or a people that ha have the law but don't have the Holy Spirit. They follow rules and regulations, but they're not led by the Holy Spirit. They're led by man's traditions, which makes God's power void. God void of power. So, it's okay to seek His presence where there is no water. That means there's no Holy Spirit. So, I looked for you in the sanctuary. Why did He look for Him in the sanctuary? to see his power and his glory. So you see, it's okay to want to go to church to get into God's manifest presence, to feel his power and his glory, to get healed. Um, that's where, when you go to God's house, God should show up. If God's not showing up when you go to church, change churches now. Okay? And the reason we want to see your power and your glory is, verse 3, because your loving kindness is better than life. Okay, so, so God's power and his glory is a representative of his loving kindness. My lips shall praise you. Thus, I will be. I will bless you while I live. I will lift my hands in your name. So, when you see when people are lifting their hands and praising God, it is something we should be doing. It's blessing God. You're blessing Him when you lift your hands. Number five. My soul shall be satisfied. Well, what does satisfied mean? It says that my soul thirsts for you and my flesh longs for you. Okay, to see your power and your glory. When you're satisfied, that means your flesh and your soul felt his power. His power and his glory and his presence. You felt it. That's why you're satisfied, because you felt it. You've experienced God. And my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. That is an awesome thing. So in other words, when you're praising and you're worshiping God, he's going to show up to listen to what you're saying. Okay, and that was Psalm 64. Now, when we praise God, we can praise Him by... Let me see here. When we praise God, Psalms 104, He shows up to listen to what we say. Praising God, it says to praise Him, that when you praise Him, the earth yields her increase. It says that He shows up, that His presence is manifested, that the enemies are stopped. So praise is very, very important. Now, one of the ways that you can praise God is you can call Him by His names. He has lots of names. Um... For example, you can say, Father God, I praise you right now. You are the Lord God Almighty. You are the Most High God. Mm. You are my Lord and my Master. You are my Lord. Here are some Hebrew names for God. Lord God Almighty is El Shaddai. The Most High guy, God is El Elyon. The Lord Master is Adonai. And the Lord Jehovah is Yahweh. Now, here are some Hebrew names that God calls himself. Now, his name is a representative of who he is. 
And you can praise him by telling him his name. He says, He is the Lord God, my banner. And that's Jehovah Nisi. He's the Lord God, our shepherd. That's Jehovah Raha. The Lord God that heals, that's Jehovah J uh, Rapha. The Lord that is there, that's Jehovah Sh Shama, Shamak. And the Lord of God of righteousness, Jehovah Sitkanu, the everlasting God. And the Lord who provides Jehovah Jireh, the Lord of peace, Jehovah Shalom. And you could say something like this, Father God, you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You provide everything I need. I thank you for providing my PT cruiser that I have need of, that I've sown for, Father. You are the Most High God. Je God, I just want to praise you and I want to thank you for my PT cruiser. I want to thank you. It feels so good. It looks so good, Father. It meets all my ministry needs. I thank you, Father. You said that you would meet our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So I thank you that I have the best. Oh, Father, you are so good. I praise and worship you. And you can just praise and worship that way. When we shout Psalms 35, 27, or bow or kneel in an attitude of expecting, we are praising God and telling of the wonderful things he does for us. We can praise God by dancing or by instruments. That's Psalms 150, Psalms 57, 8, Psalms 22, 3. In 2 Corinthians 20, 22, the singers were sent out in front of the warriors to praise God and in the Bible, and they had victory because they didn't have to fight because the singers were sent out first. The praise and worshipers do battle. They do victory. They dance victory. They bring in God's presence. Praising and worshiping, you can do it by lifting up your hands. Um, and we're told to lift up our hands in Psalms 141, 2, 1 Timothy 2, 8, Psalms 134, 2. It tells us to lift our hands to praise God. And we can praise Him by shouting, by clapping, by lifting our hands, by kneeling and bowing, by holding out our hands in expectation, by singing. And when we sing praises to God, it seems to have more of an impact than when we say them. So singing in tongues or your heavenly language, or singing praises to God is very powerful. That's Colossians 3.16 or Ephesians 5.19. There are seven words in the Bible that talks about praise. One is yada, that's extending your hands. One is toda, that's extending your hands in thanksgiving. One is hala, that means to shine, boast, celebrate, and to be foolish. Shabbat is to shout loudly. Psalms 35.27's barak, to kneel, to bless God, to bow down in expecting attitude. Who says you don't give in order to get? That's the law of the kingdom, sowing and reaping. Okay, Zarmar, Zarmar, rejoicing on an instrument. Tal, Talhila, to sing praises. Psalms 22.3 says that he inhabits your praise. So if you want God's presence to show up, you want to feel God's presence, you need to sing and worship and praise and dance until you feel His presence. And it gets easier and easier and faster and faster because you stay in an attitude of expecting His presence, an attitude of having fellowship. How can you have fellowship with God if He's not right there? You need to practice His fellowship and communion with Him all day. We're to praise Him at all times because He has a good answer for us. Hebrews 13:15. Praise gives us strength and stops the enemy. Matthew 21, 16, Psalms 8, 2. And God comes to visit us when we praise, Psalms 22, 3. God brings answers to our problems when we praise, Psalms 50, 14, and chapter 15, and chapter 23. The Lord makes us look good when we praise. And it brings us into God's will, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, and 18. When we praise with our whole, enemy, our whole heart, our enemies will be turned away by God's presence. Psalms 9, 1, and 4. And our job is to praise the Lord. 1 Peter 2, 9. Now remember, Satan was the uh, angel of worship in heaven, and he got kicked out of heaven. And um, so we have that job now. What an honor. It says that we have a two-edged sword in our hand, that we bind up kings and execute judgment when we praise and worship. Um, First Peter 2, 9 is our job to praise the Lord. And when we praise the Lord, He gives us revelation and teaches us about the Bible, and that's Isaiah 38, 19. And um, that's all we're going to go over today. And I'm Reverend Saklan, and remember to check out my website for several new DVDs on teaching and on fun. And I'm Reverend Saklan, and I'm out.